it. It's go time. Welcome to go time. Your source for wide ranging discussions from all around the go community. Find us on the web at gotime.fm, on the Fediverse at gotime at changelog.social, and on X at gotime.fm. Big thanks to our partners at fly.io, the home of changelog.com. Fly transforms containers into micro VMs that run on their hardware in 30 plus regions on six continents, so you can launch your app near your users. Learn more at fly.io. Okay, here we go. Welcome to Go Time. This is a very special episode. Uh, this is episode number 300. So today we're doing something a little different from our usual content. We're having a, a full panel episode with our co-hosts, with all of our hosts. And we're talking about the, the past of Go Time, the, the current present, and our plans for the future. So joining me live is John Calhoun. How are you doing, John? Good, Chris. How are you? Doing well. It's a, it's a cold day here in New York, but besides that, doing pretty good. Joining me as well is Johnny Borsico. How are you doing today, Johnny? Hello, hello. Good to be back for another year. Yeah, it's also very cold um, here on, in Maryland, a little further south than you, but very cold still. We got some snow uh, over the last couple of days, so yeah, enjoying it. Yeah, I, I was surprised to see snow in New York as well. We were like, oh, it's cold and, and there's snow now. This is weird. And <laughs> also joining us today is Ian Lopshire. How are you doing today, Ian? I'm doing great, except for that 20 degree walk with my dog this morning. Um, that part wasn't great, but <laughs> but yeah, happy to be here. I'm excited about this episode. Uh, so hello, viewers, or I guess listeners, not viewers. You probably can't see us right now. But listeners, this is Chris from the future. I guess the past for you. But the future from when we recorded the episode, uh, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes to get everybody, you know, a whole six people on a podcast at the same time. Schedules are tough, especially since we're trying to, you know, as, as you'll learn, learn later in the podcast, trying to get more content out to all of you. So uh, Angelica and I decided to have a, a conversation, you know, roughly answering the same kind of questions, talking about the past, the present and the future. And uh, these little sections are going to be kind of stitched into the rest of the rest of the podcast. And I'm sure our wonderful editors will come up with some fantastic transition audio to help you differentiate when it's, you know, the four of us in the past and the two of us in the less past. Yeah, it's going to this is going to be a fun time, though. Uh, so, so, Angelica, how, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just uh Pottering along with life, staying positive as the snow pours down outside my window in New York. So um, somewhat idyllic, but also not enough snow to really do the snow angel frolicking outside vibe that I was hoping for. Yeah, especially not in the uh, in the streets of New York. That's not really. <laughs> no, but I, was, I wanted to have my like singing in the rain moment, except in the New York snow. You know, and then gracefully fall into the rubbish bins. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm excited yeah. to chit chat uh, a little bit about Go, uh, Go Time, uh, and the future yeah. and reflect. I love. We're doing like a retrospective. Yeah, it's a it's like a meta episode. Yeah. Like the the thing I kind of took away from the from the main recording is that it is that we are just kind of talking about. It's kind of like inside baseball. It's like like the oh, this is how like everything happens. How everything gets made. Three hundred is a big number. Yeah, yeah, it's it's quite the milestone, and I believe uh, that it's also 300 episodes over eight years, with I think like a little bit of a break in between as we kind of switched from the original crew to the to the current crew. But yeah, 300 episodes, super exciting. How how do we all feel about this this milestone? Is there any kind of like initial thoughts you want to throw out there? This is Sparta. <laughs> I mean, it's 300, right? So <laughs> that kind of had to, you know? Uh, that took yeah. me a second, actually. I feel a little bit stupid about that. It took me longer than it should have as well. So. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's not that old of a movie. I mean, I did tell you that I was sick today, so I'm going to blame it on that, even though I probably still wouldn't. I have no excuse. No, I, I probably would be in the same boat, and I just, I'm going to use that as an excuse. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, Johnny, you say it's not that old of a movie. 300 came out in 2006. 
That was Dang. 20 years ago, almost. Dang. <laughs> You're telling me there are some people who might be listening to this podcast who weren't born yet? When this movie yes. Yes, when, Johnny. Wow. <laughs> I suppose I was 12? Yeah. <laughs> what? So, so if you listener also uh, missed out on that that reference, uh, do not feel bad. It, it was it was it's quite a while ago, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, do go and watch it so that I don't so that you get the reference. It's a good one. It's a good movie. Yeah, yeah. But you know, three hundred. It's a it's a it's a pretty big milestone. Yeah, John, Ian, you have any initial thoughts on it? I don't know. Uh, three hundred episodes is a lot of talking about go. <laughs> um. I'm honestly not sure how we manage that, but I'm I'm happy it's still going. See, I want to say I'm not sure how we manage it without like repeating topics, and then I go through and realize that we occasionally do repeat topics, but a lot of times that's not terrible because there's like new things to discuss and like new technologies and all that stuff changes. So, you know, it's one of those I at first I'm like, man, how do you do 300 without repeating? But I don't think it's so bad now that I've looked at them. Yeah, especially over you know like a you know eight year period is a is a pretty long time. Uh, so even a topic. Kind of as you mentioned that we talked about in 2016 or 2017, a lot's going to have changed with it. With pretty much everything that we talked about uh, right. between then and and now. I mean, this is this is tech, right? So even though we were very, well, I mean, at this point, the adjacent the, the topics, right, to go whether it be you know systems engineering or or services, microservices, and nano services, whatever it is. Like we, we talk about a lot of different things, uh, um, queuing theory. I mean, we, we've touched on a lot of different things, you know, topics that are adjacent to go within the community. And sometimes we even go completely outside the realm of tech. I remember one episode that we had uh, was about the sort of neurodiversity within, <laughs> within the, within the go community. So that was like completely off the, of the beaten path. Right. So I think we say every now and then we sort of we either expand on a topic, go deeper on a topic. Some topics we've had have been super, super technical, right? Um, and then, you know, sometimes we go in the complete opposite. So I think that speaks to the breadth and depth, right, of the show, which I'm hoping, honestly, you know, even though we're definitely making some changes this year, I, I don't take that for granted, right? Like, because that that just, it just shows that we're able to sort of touch on a lot of different topics. And based on the numbers that I'm seeing for, for our listenership, and people are still chiming in and, and sort of listening to every podcast, like they're very consistently listening to every podcast. Um, now, I'm sure some some episodes, you know, some folks like more than others, but, you know, over eight years, we still have people that have been listening to the show for eight years. So that's that's amazing. And the number of listeners continues to grow year over year. So I think that speaks to the quality of the show and, and its durability and staying power. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's interesting that like our our first episode that we did, Go Time Number One, and the last episode we did of last year had about the same listenership. So it you kind of you know at least we've been consistent over the years. It's like we haven't like fallen off or anything. So that that's definitely an exciting thing. So I know it's like you know when when you hear about things lasting a long time, it happens with like meetups, it happens with podcasts. I think people are like, wow, you've been doing it for this long. How do you like hold it together like that? And it's it's. It's a testament to the panel and to also change log for doing such a great job producing it that we're still doing so so well. We have such a high listener base. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to the change log team. And those folks are super supportive. You know, we're talking, you know, um, Jared's probably our, our touch point sort of a day to day kind of thing. And, and he's super supportive of the show uh, whenever we get a chance to talk with, uh, you know, Adam Stack, you know, super supportive. So these folks are are behind the show 100 percent. And that makes a huge difference. So, you know, definitely shout out to them. And, and, and if you if you come across them at a conference or something like that, they're always hanging out at open source conferences and, and things and always having they have lots of other shows as well. For those who didn't know, uh, we are one of many shows in the change log portfolio of shows. So definitely check check out their their other offerings as well these are very cool people to know and they do such a great job supporting us and others in the community but johnny when you're talking about the staying power of the podcast it's wild to me as well that people still go back and listen from the beginning all the way through like i've talked to countless people that are like yeah i started listening and you know they, they started episode one which to me is a little bit wild because if you think about like conference talks and stuff <laughs> i don't know many people that are like oh i want to like go back and listen to all the gopher con talks from like the first year because they generally mm. just assume like that's not going to be useful information. Now I want to go look at the first year's Gopher Con talks. I think that could be like a, <laughs> an interesting experience. It'd be awesome to like analyze patterns and how they've changed over time, like which things people proposed, and then you see them go out of style, and something else comes in. 
Because there's definitely been some of those things that have either faded or changed over time. Like I think functional options are one of those ones that got really popular and then kind of got overused to the point that now people are kind of against them in many cases. You know, you're not wrong. Like I, I still write Go every day. I've been writing Go every day pretty much for the last, uh, I can't remember, like six, seven years. But like I find myself thinking, like I made, like especially made a decision. I'm like, should I, should I use a functional argument style for this thing? I'm like, ah, oh, no, just a just good old plain old struct will do. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was like, uh, I think this uh, this thing is overused. And I look back at my code. I'm like, yeah, I've kind of used that everywhere. I'm like, ah, you know, like I don't feel like you know setting up all that boilerplate and eh, it's just a, a, a struct will do. <laughs> I, I still remember because uh, I attended the first Gopher Con. I still remember there's this like one point. I don't know. I don't know why it sticks in my mind so much, but there's this uh, one talk that they had, and and the speaker had this one line of like, "We don't have time to throw exceptions," and like the whole audience just like clapped because it was back in the day when it was like people were like, "Why doesn't Go have exceptions? What this? What's this error handling?" And everybody in the community was just like, "No, we have good error handling," and it's just kind of this this epic line. But there was just that. Initial GopherCon was so <laughs> fantastic with like Kelsey Hightower stepping in as MC, like kind of right in the middle of yeah. it too. There were yeah, there were yeah, so many yeah. things, and and that has a, a connection to us as well because the folks that started GopherCon also started this podcast. So we come from mm-hmm. you know the same same lineage there, and it's it's amazing that GopherCon also has had you know staying power over the years, even through the pandemic and everything. So fun fact that you mentioned that. Like I was originally, I almost made the roster for the very first group that hosted the podcast, but the, for for various reasons, uh, it it didn't happen. But that original OG group, I was totally behind them. You know, I was like, hey, like you know, every time the show came out, I would listen, everything else, and eventually, I right, you know, I got tapped to join the the panelists, and I was like, like I always think about that sort of situation as if I had gotten my hopes up and didn't get the part, right? So to speak, if to use <laughs> the theater terminology, right? If I didn't, if I audition, I didn't get the part, right? I could have been all, you know, like sort of a pissed and bitter about not getting on. But like, to me, it was the opportunity to actually have a show, right? That is dedicated to go, that is dedicated to something I love doing, right? It was such an honor to even be considered. And I was like, basically, I saw that as, wow, okay, so Go is coming into its own, right? Go is getting popular. We have a conference for the language. We have podcasts now. We have tons of blog posts. We have YouTube videos. Like that, That's how you know the language, right? The technology has, has a community behind it. So I was, I was super psyched when, when I saw that, right? That was sort of a, a major data point for me. And if, basically, I was like, okay, I made the right bet. From, from a career perspective, I made the right bet in picking this technology and, and trying to master it. So that kind of reminded me of that <laughs> of that original panel. Shout out to those to those folks too. I remember meeting some of them at my first go for God and kind of being starstruck, you know, like <laughs> Yeah, and I don't think I don't think many folks uh, know who these people are. So we had Carlicia, uh, we had uh, um, Eric St. Martin. Brian Kettleson. Brian Kettleson, yep, yep. And then uh, we had one more. Uh, who was it? Who was it? Was it three? Was it was it only I think three? The original was just three. Right. The original was, yeah. Oh, not I remember it. Like original or, the very first idea was to have four. I would have been the fourth. But when we when we decided to do the three panelists, that's when I got cut. <laughs> 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 that's why I remember. Now I remember the details. Oh, you're, you're bringing up a traumatic experience for me, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the three, the OG, those were the three. Yeah. And they did such an excellent job for like well over a year, right? If I recall correctly. So I'd have to go back and look at the roster of, of, of podcasts to see uh, um, when, when was the last time they were, they were together. They've got like at least 70 episodes, I think. At least. Right. That's 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 a lot. That's over a year. So, yeah, like looking at the the back catalog, there's just a whole lot. And and John, when did you uh, kind of come into the podcast to go time? I was a guest back with the original cast. And I remember like. I was, it was all very new to me. So like my mouth was really dry and I was really nervous. And like one of those, like, do I take a shot beforehand type things, <laughs> which is very weird to go from that to like hosting. And now I don't think twice about it, I guess. So yeah, it would have been, I, I guested on one of the earlier, like not earlier, maybe like the sixties, one of those episodes. And then whenever they were redoing it with a whole new set of hosts, um, I joined at that point. That was one of the major changes, right? I mean, speaking obviously about the topic du jour, right? So every once in a while, we kind of 
make some changes to how the show is sort of run, you know, who the panelists are and things of that nature, just to keep it fresh, but also to work with the logistics of, you know, today's, what people have in terms of time and availability and, and capacity, right? So year after year. So just because somebody's been doing a show for, you know, for a year or two, doesn't mean they're going to always be available to do it, right? So, you know, every every time there's a change in the, in the, in the roster, right? And we've had, we had a few at, at, at this point. Um, then that's usually the reason why, right? You you start hearing more from people you, you basically that they, maybe you didn't hear a lot from previously, but now you're hearing a lot more from them, right? So as the roster changes, as people become more available, less available, these are the kind of changes we make, and these are some of the changes we're making this year, right, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Three hundred episodes. That's that's a huge milestone. It's exciting. How are how are you feeling about it? it that's a lot of episodes. A lot of talking. It's super impressive. I mean, the fact that we have so much content to talk about and that our wonderful listeners keep listening to us and the wonderful people who create the show keep on coming up with intriguing and weird topics, some very odd topics that we've done, but have been like oddly brilliant. And then some that have just been kind of staples of the show i.e like checking in on updates to the go language is always wonderful and great so i think we've we've done a lot of cool stuff and i think as someone who's pretty new i newish i don't know whether i'm allowed to say i'm a newish host i think it's been like what two years three how long is it it's been four yeah. years it's been uh yeah because we you and i is you me and adelaide yeah. joined at the same time and it was after Go for Con in 2020. Yeah. When Jared was like, "Hey, you all want to be you want to be host?" So yeah, it's 2024 now. So this is going to be our our fourth year okay. on the podcast. Yeah, at the end of this year, it'll be four. I feel like I am still finding my host feet, but uh, I clearly should have uh, got better over that time. So <laughs> here's to this year. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to this year. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not the newest host, right? Yeah. Like you're, we're like in, we're like in the middle. We got, we got Ian as the newest host. And I think, uh, I think Johnny and John joined around the same time. So with maybe Matt, they they were all kind of that first cohort, first cohort. And then there's us. And then there's, there's Ian. Just want to linger around the past for a hot minute. And I want to, I want to ask you guys a couple questions about episodes we've done. So, uh, which are the episodes that you have liked the most? You can just have one. You can have two. Have a couple. But uh, John, I'll start with you. What are your favorite episodes? So I was thinking about this, and for me, it's a little bit hard because there's the episodes that I like creating, and then there's the episodes I like listening to, and they sometimes overlap and sometimes don't. Which hopefully people like the ones that I wouldn't necessarily like listening. You know, like it's hard to judge my own episode when I'm listening. Because I feel like if I'm like, oh, that's a good episode, but I'm involved. So it's a very hard thing to to get right. But traditionally, I think the two types of episodes I really like are either ones that are a little bit more off the beaten path. So uh, we did one with the guy who created Temple. And I really enjoyed that because it was somebody who was doing something that's not really the norm. Not only did they create a template library, but it was compiled. They created a language server. They did all these things that were just not normal. And it was really cool to like talk with them about that experience and that process and what drove them to do all those things. And to also encourage other people that you don't necessarily have to follow the same path that everybody else is taking when you're building a library or you know doing whatever you're doing. The other type of episode that I've really liked are the ones that are more like deep dives on subjects. As an example, there was one where we had the author of a networking book and we did more of a deep dive on TCP IP, like how the protocol works and more of that. And it wasn't incredibly focused on Go specifically, but I think it was something that every Go developer benefits from learning from and learning about. So I really like those deep dives, but I will say like we're talking about the podcast changing and things like that. Those episodes tend to be incredibly hard to create because there's a lot of you know, digging into things and research unless you just want to take an author of a book and really rely heavily on them to do a lot of the work. You know, So those ones, while they're really fun and, and really great to listen to, in my opinion, they are very hard to create because you don't just get to hop into an interview with somebody. You usually have to have like a rough idea of how the technology works so that you can come up with good questions that dive into all sorts of different you know details of it. I think I was on both of those episodes. So you're also saying you like episodes that I'm on, which is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's other ones too. Like I love the ones yeah. that focus more on like how a solo developer or things a solo developer would appreciate, which I recall Matt did one. Um, I forget who else was on it about like the solo gopher. 
And I like the ones that don't necessarily dive into technologies that are enterprisey, but it's like, how can a small group or one or two people actually take advantage of Go and get the most out of it? So I think that probably falls more into the off the beaten path a little bit too. So sorry, Chris, I couldn't let you have that. I had to had to find an episode. <laughs> you yeah, no, Ian not. and I also did a solo gopher episode. <laughs> I think it was called the solo gopher. <laughs> that's that's probably the one I'm thinking of. Why was I thinking Matt did that one? I feel like Matt, I think Matt probably did an episode like that. You know, when you have 300 episodes, it's sometimes hard to to keep yeah. it all well aligned and all that. All right, Johnny. What uh, what are your favorite episodes or favorite episode? Well, naturally, every episode I'm on are <laughs> uh, my favorites. Um, <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, recency bias right plays a role here. But I definitely like last year's uh, Seven Deadly Sins of Go. That was that fun. I did with uh, Matt Ryer and uh, I forgot his name again. Uh, John something. I'll find it in the roster. But it was it was a good. I think you were you on that one too. Chris? I was on that one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. There was a, yeah, it was the, the four of us. Um, yeah, it was, it was, I think what I tend to like about those shows is that personally, I don't, I don't take myself too seriously, um, you know, in certain scenarios, but uh, like when I come in expecting to have fun on a show, right. You know, we're all, you know, joking around and, and, you know, the commentary is flowing and like, we're talking about technical stuff, but it doesn't have to be dry. Right? It doesn't have to be sort of completely esoteric and people are just, you know, mentioning, you know, weird facts and stuff like that. And that's all well and good too. And, and for those that are sort of, a, you know, really, you know, sort of hardcore geeks and really like to dive in deep into the technical stuff, that's that's totally cool. And hopefully we, 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 we offer some of that too. But I think the episodes I have the most fun on are the ones where the jokes are flowing. We're all, you know, basically, and we have some banter, you know, and and it, it just makes it fun, right? To just, I mean, you know, people have come to me at, at conferences and say, hey, you know, I listened to that show. You guys were so funny. You know, I was walking my dog and something. I was cackling, laughing, you know, on the, on the path where people were looking at me weird, but they didn't know I was listening to you guys on a podcast show. Like hearing stuff like that is like, is amazing, right? To, to just know that, you're listening to something technical, but somehow it's bringing some level of joy in your life while, while you listen to, to these these voices. I mean, it's kind of cool. So, yeah, definitely those kind of episodes. And I also always enjoyed the What's New in Go version, blah, 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 right? Episodes, right? We usually have a special guests for those episodes. You, you know, I think for the last three or four episodes, it's been sort of Carolina, Carolina jo- Johnson who's uh, basically comes back over and over again to help us walk us through, right? This is what's new. This is what's changing the language. These are the quirks where they've addressed. These are, and for Go 122, we plan on doing you know just that as well. So I definitely enjoy those. They keep the community up to date on on what's what, what's coming, what what's changing, what do they need to be on the lookout for. So I think overall, it's just really having fun in the episodes. The ones where we're laughing a lot, I think you'll probably find that those have a lot of listening numbers because uh, we have fun. If we're having fun, our audience is having fun. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I do love some of those uh, just really loose, kind of go with the vibe, go with the flow episodes. I think Matt is really good at doing some of those, just like kidding around and joking about stuff. <laughs> this is a changelog news break. DevDocs.io is my new favorite documentation browser. It combines multiple API documentations in a fast, organized, and searchable web interface. This installable web app works offline, has keyboard shortcuts for quick navigation, supports fuzzy matching, and is 100% free and open source. I've been using it nonstop since I found it last week. It's so nice to have a unified interface for disparate languages and ecosystems right there in a browser tab just waiting for you. You just heard one of our five top stories from Monday's Changelog News. Subscribe to the podcast to get all of the week's top stories and pop your email address in at changelog.com slash news to also receive our free companion email with even more developer news worth your attention. Once again, that's changelog.com slash news. Okay, uh, yeah. What are what are your favorite episodes? Yeah, so I, I went through the back catalog earlier, picked out a couple of my favorites. And the pattern that came out of it is I love the episodes where we're talking to like an expert that you can just tell cares about what they're talking about. I think my favorite of those was Who Owns Our Code? 
the name's escaping me, but the lawyer that was on that episode, you could just tell he knew what he was talking about and he cared about it. And we also did one on Go in biology, where a guy had just created a whole biology ecosystem in Go. Um, and you could also just tell he cared and knew what he was talking about. And also the ones with like some of the, the Go team members. Um, there's one where Filippo and Roland talk about what's new in the crypto libraries. And just again, you can they care about it. Like they're excited to talk about it. And that makes me excited and I don't know, kind of inspiring to just continue to increase my knowledge, right? Like, yeah. So Chris, how about you? What were your favorite episodes? I mean, this kind of loose into my next question, which was going to be about like what episodes have you like gone back and listened to the most? But I think one of them is maybe personal bias, but one of the first episodes I hosted was the about maintaining your code. And I've gone back and listened to that episode at least three or four times. And I think it was like, it's like me and you, Johnny and Sam Boyer. And I think maybe somebody else. I was on yeah, that Yeah, there you guys. It was the uh, writing actually maintainable code. That was yeah, a series. Yeah. I think we had a series on that, yeah. right? Like, maybe with like two or three episodes yeah, I on think that. that was either the first or the second episode in that, that mini series that I did on uh, maintenance. And this is maintaining not just your code, but also your life and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I remember that that was just like such a like... It was, it was weird because I was just like, oh, I'm like a new host and all of this. But it, I was worried that it wouldn't come through as well. But it's definitely one I, I've gone back and listened to. And I'm like, oh, no, this is actually like a it's like a pretty good episode. And I just like love going back and listening to it. So it's definitely those that one. And I, I really also like the, the episodes where we're, you know, talking about Go, but not like super directly. Right. Like either talking about like the community or like struggles that we face as, as software engineers in general that can then be related back to go pretty easily. Those are definitely like my favorite two types of, of episodes. Which episodes have you like, liked the most or which topics have like you, you really like enjoyed either producing or, or listening to or hosting or, or any of that? I mean, and I promise I'm not saying this is the first one just because it's you, Chris. But the, the series that, that kind of you spearheaded different guests, somewhat different topics around like maintenance and maintaining your code, et cetera. I loved listening to those firstly, because I think they were just really well-structured, really interesting episodes. But secondly, because they were applicable outside of Go. So I would say as we're talking about like my favorite episodes in Go, I think they they skew in three categories. I think the first is like the maintenance series, episodes that talk about tech concepts, concepts that are applicable to broader technology, software engineering, but can be applied to Go or are talked about in the context of a Go project, the Go language, etc. For example, again, I feel weird saying episodes that I liked, but I didn't like like them because it was me hosting them. I liked them because of the guests. But um, the one that I did more recently uh, about event-driven systems and architecture, I absolutely loved. One, because it was applicable broader than just Go, but mostly because I had Chris Richardson on the show as one of the guests, as well as um, Indu. And they both just knew so much about the topic. And my hope is that with episodes like that, where we have two experts, and then we have bluntly me, who's more of a newbie asking these questions, listeners will be able to return to that episode. It's evergreen, and they can learn, they can explore about a baseline concept. But also, the episodes I love the most are the ones where like, I am, the, I am sitting and live on the podcast learning about things I don't know. Weirdly, I enjoy the episodes where I go in and I've got experts and I am going in going, oh, I don't really know that much about this topic, but I just get to ask all the fun questions. I love those the most. So I think that's good. The other side is the ones that really go into go. So I mentioned kind of in the intro a little bit as we chatted, the ones that talk about specific improvements, new versions of go, new features. I think there was an episode maybe much earlier in the year about I think it was a deep dive into the Go stack or Go infrastructure. I love that because I think both for more newbie gophers, but also for more seasoned Go engineers who might not actually understand the like weeds of Go, I think it's really interesting. So I like that. I'm trying to think back. There have been so many great episodes. Uh, oh, I also love the episodes that are talked about in the context of tech, but bring up more societal 
questions in my mind, i.e. the, uh, actually that you were on with me, the Who Owns Our Code two-part series that we did with um, Lewis Villa, I believe, the tech lawyer who came on and spoke with us about like ownership in the law, but also in technology. I think that for me, one was just interesting as a new interesting concept to explore with an expert. But two, I think brought a lot of questions about ownership, about if you work for a company, what is your time and effort like pay that they're paying for and what is the work that you're doing that is your own. Um, I'm actually hoping, spoiler alert, that we can do another episode, perhaps with Lewis again, uh, or with someone else talking about the concept of ownership in machine learning and AI, cheekily, which I can't say much about, but especially given the ongoing lawsuit that the New York Times filed against OpenAI, I think that's a really interesting conversation to have. And I think it's going to become a more and more interesting conversation to have when it comes to ownership of data in this more kind of open AI and the machine learning future that we have. So I'm excited. I love that in the past, that episode about who owns our code. I think that topic is only going to get more interesting Mm. in the developments we're seeing in technology. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. That that was one of like those two episodes we did were like some of my, my, my favorites for sure of just like getting to talk about this like kind of thorny deep question that we have so i feel like you know it's it's something that's a surface level feels so obvious but when you actually dig into it you're like oh actually this is a really challenging question to answer and there there's so much to it and yeah once again with like the whole you know especially that new york times lawsuit where i think there's i've listened to a bit go on uh, the rumblings of people saying like oh like you know, this could completely destroy the way that AI works, or it could just be like a a way to actually make things uh, financially viable. It's like there's, there's all sorts of angles on it. It's it's truly those early days where we like don't know much. So yeah, being able to be able to really get to those topics, I think is, is so much fun to do on the podcast. No, exactly. Talk about developing stories and new things where we can just like How do we think this is going to go? I don't know. It could go all these different ways. I think new technologies is where I think go time episodes do the best, in my opinion. When we're talking about new things that not very many people have experimented with. But if we get someone on the podcast who has experimented with XYZ technology, new package, new way of doing things, I think it's a great way to open up that technology and those learnings to the broader kind of go, go and tech community. Or whoever wants to listen to Go to Time, which should be anyone. <laughs> I guess we can wrap this into one question, really. Of uh, are there any episodes that you guys go back and listen to, kind of multiple times, or have listened to multiple multiple times? And are there any episodes that you kind of like? If someone's like, "Oh, you have a podcast, like great, I want to listen to it." Are there any episodes you like recommend to people to be like their introduction to Go Time? Not to beat a dead horse but that who owns your code episode is the one i send to people i've listened to that probably three times um a lot of things you just never think about in that episode that you're like oh maybe i should be thinking about this stuff i will say chris oddly enough the first episode i was on was the one that i've probably listened to or did listen to the most but for different reasons it was because i was so nervous i was going to look dumb as a guest that i like listened to it like three (laughs) times looking for where i needed an editor or something no, but it, it turned out fine. It's just, I think, one of those things when you're nervous about something new, you do a lot. But whenever I recommend it, for whatever reason, I, I probably tend to lean towards episodes where I'm not in it because it's just a weird thing recommending something that I hosted. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it. I just think for whatever reason, mentally, I'm just like, uh, if I look like an idiot in that episode, I don't want to recommend it and then let that happen. But a lot of it just depends on the person and what they're looking at, you know, why they want to listen to Go Time and, and what they're interested in. So if I have somebody who is like a full-time Go developer, obviously I don't want to introduce them to an episode that's like how to structure your file, your your Go code and things like that. But if it's somebody who's very new to Go, which a lot of times that's the type of people I'm communicating with, then episodes like that can be really useful because it's like this dives into those questions you're really, you know, looking to to answer and it's a good place to start before you go to other resources. So I guess I'm lucky enough that I just interact with a lot of people who are new getting into Go and, and new to the whole community. So I can oftentimes sort of tailor that response as, oh, this is an episode that you would really enjoy to get started. And almost all of those people end up being like, oh, now I listen to all the episodes. But it's just a cool thing that you can, we've done so many episodes that you can almost point to an episode for any topic. Johnny? I don't listen to anything with myself in it. 
<laughs> Honestly, <laughs> like I John, I, I, I might, <laughs> I, if I go back and listen to it, I'm like, that sounds dumb. Why did I even say that? <laughs> like I'll start, I'll start beating myself up. So for that reason, I spare myself the self-adulation. And I just, I don't bother listening to, to, to myself um, after, after things. Uh, heck, I might even, nine out of 10 times, I don't even watch recordings of myself for talks I give. Like I'm just too self-critical. That, uh, that's a weakness of mine. It's something I need to work on. Personally, I need to seek therapy for that or something, but it's just I, I don't like to do that. All right? if, if, if I do, I, I'm genuinely just like John. I'm basically identifying, okay, what parts do I need to improve on, right? Like I'm, I'm looking at it, so I'm consuming it very critically, right? And trying very hard not to beat myself up over, you know, words I misspeak or if I say something wrong, if I get a fact incorrect or something like that. Like I'm, I'm being very sort of methodical, just studying so I can actually do better next time kind of thing, but not really to enjoy it, to be like, oh, you did a pretty good job. Like I almost never tell myself I did a good job on a, on a recording. Just a note on that. There are so many times I've recorded an episode and I've been like, I sounded so stupid. And then you go back and listen to it. And our editors do such a good job cutting out the pieces that make you sound stupid. I, I've been amazed on multiple occasions. That's true. That's true. They do they're such a great job. It also makes me want to ask Johnny, you have a course on O'Reilly, right? Yeah, I have. I, I do live trainings on O'Reilly. I have a course on LinkedIn Learning uh, and I'm working on some new stuff as well. Did you ever go through and edit one of those? No, the, the editing process, oh, they tear it apart. But did you do it or do they do it? No, they do it. Oh, okay. I was going to ask how you manage that because I feel like that's another area where you're trying to clip up the, you know, make sure it's it's right. And it's really hard to not be so critical on yourself that you're like, I need to redo this. And then you get to the, like, if you keep oh, doing I've, it all the I've time, done it. Oh. just like spend so long recording. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like when I, when I send in, when I'm doing like screen, like uh, recordings, right. To send it in, like I did, you know, for, for my last LinkedIn learning course, the course itself is, is like, I don't know, two hours long or something. And I kid you not, I must have spent like five times that recording, re-recording, editing like that's even before i send it to them for them to do their thing right so i'm like pre-editing the damn thing before i send it to them so that they can clean it up you know even further and they tell you you know don't bother don't do that we're gonna take all that stuff i'm like no i don't want to see people see me do this so i'm gonna (laughs) i'm gonna pre-edit it and send it in (laughs) and then you can you can clean up what i didn't get right so so yeah it's it's a complete it's a mess it's a mess i'm a mess yeah i I think i have an advantage here because i you know I have edited a lot of video and audio in my life, so I'm kind of used to the process of like slicing and dicing things. But I, I also like don't really listen to episodes that I'm on, mostly because I'm like, oh, well, I was there, so like I I remember everything that happened. So I'm going to use podcast listening time. I'm going to listen to something that I'm that I'm not on. But I feel like there's also times when I will just like like I think this happened a couple of weeks ago on the on the Kafka episode when there was just like a long string of things I was saying, and then like part way through I was like. I don't, I don't think I'm making sense. I don't know where I started this. I don't know where I am. So I'm just going to try to end it. And then I do. And then I go back and listen. And I'm like, actually, no, that was actually pretty coherent. I don't know how that happened. But it was like a, a word salad that just, just came out. But that's the kind of stuff that I'm like, oh, oh, man. Oh, no. Something I realized is listening is way easier than talking. And what I mean there is like, like you said, like that word salad, right? Like it's hard to keep that all in your head. But as a listener, it's just, you know start to finish it's so much easier to parse like the concept yeah and johnny i don't think we got an actual recommendation i think we just got a i don't listen to episodes that i'm on <laughs> yeah 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 so uh, that which is why like if somebody said hey what's what, which episode should i start with i'd be like start with the last one <laughs> you know, yeah and work your way backwards you know as you, you know or, or browse the catalog on changelog and, and see if something speaks to you because like i really don't have i don't think I, I have a favorite episode i think it's any episode where i remember having a good time having fun laughing like, you know, I might not be able to tell you which episodes those were because I try to have fun in every recording, every 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 episode. But wh- whichever ones you're having fun on is is the one that they start with. So find something that speaks to you and start there. Work your way back. Yeah, I think I think my recommendation is something similar. Like, 
a recent episode, I feel like, is a good good place to start. Also, it's like at the top in most podcast players and things. You can just click it. Like I remember I was sitting with my friend and he was like, oh, you're on, a, you're on a podcast. I was like, yeah, I'm on a podcast. And he's like, oh, what's the name of him? I'm like, oh, it's go time. And he looks it up and then he like starts playing it. And then he just like somehow randomly scrolls to like some part in it. And my and like my voice starts coming out of his phone. And he's like, oh, that's you. And I'm like, yes, that's me. But also, how did you manage to like scroll to a random part and it's me talking it's also a little bit of self, like a self conscious there being like, do I talk too much? Is that <laughs> no matter where I scrub in this thing, it's you it's talking, like, Chris. Uh, What's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, are there any episodes that you've like gone back and listened to multiple times, slash, that you would like recommend to people who ask about the podcast? I'm like, oh, you're on a podcast. Cool. What episode should I start listening to? I think. There are two that spring to mind, one of which, two of, I think I'm going to get their titles a little bit right, but I'm sure if you Google it, it'll be something. There was one that I believe you did that was about like simplicity within code and over, like overcomplicating code. I'm trying to remember what it was called. Anyway, but that one was really great because it was talking about a concept that applies again to Go developers and non-go developers but also i go back and listen to it that one a lot partly because i just think like i enjoy listening to it it's like a good conversation but secondly just because i think in general as a person but also like bluntly like my engineering team uh, and other engineering teams like it's easy for us to over engineer and over complicate so i like that episode just because it's like a good reminder of like okay let's actually think about simplicity versus over complicating versus over engineering i just think it's a good reminder if i'm being completely honest an episode that i listen to or i tell people to listen to pretty often when mostly when they find out that i'm on go time as a host is the first episode i ever did which i think you were on with me partly because i'm like they're like, oh, you know, we love you. We love the podcast. It's great. I'm like, <laughs> I was freaking out the first time I did it. Don't worry. Like guests will be like, oh, Angelica, like it seems like you're very comfortable. I'm like, <laughs> no. And I'll have them listen to this, that first episode. It was a great episode. I want to be clear. But like, it's so clear how uh, nervous I was. And my voice is so high pitched. That I'm like, oh my gosh, I sound like a squeaky toy. But also the first episode I did was on diversity. Right. I can't remember the title, but it was the one where you had done a brilliant talk at GoForCon 2020. It was also the, the same year that Johnny had done his um, GoForCon talk, uh, where we he put those really powerful images up on the screen of all of the people of color who came to GoForCon. And bluntly, it was like not very many people at all. And we sat and we chatted about that. And I think what excited me most about that episode was, and it's one of many that we've done since and before that had been done where we discuss something that is societal, but is hugely relevant in the tech community and is important to keep revisiting. And I love that episode, which actually maybe spoiler alert, I'm looking to the future. It's an episode that I would really like us to do more of in terms of that type of episode talking about things that are more societal or psychological based but are deeply ingrained in the technical community so i'm hopeful that we can maybe do more of those i mean i think go time should always be rooted in the technology rooted in talking about you know that but i i would like spoiler alert looking to the future a hope for this year is that we can either plat in or bring in more of that kind of conversation to more technical conversations, or we can just have more of those kind of episodes. But I think those two were the ones that sprung to mind. Okay, so uh, that's the past, right? That's the where we've come from. So now let's talk. Let's talk about the present. So I think we can we can, as Johnny alluded to earlier, kind of bring up some some things that have been happening with the show that are causing us to do some rethinking, some restructuring. Uh, I guess first up, our our listener base, y'all are absolutely fantastic. You've been coming back week after week after week. The numbers have been have been great. It's it, you know that's the that's the message that we all feel. That's the message we're getting all from Changelog. Uh, however, you may have noticed that uh, we're a little light on on sponsors right now. And the uh, Jared and Adam brought this up on, I think, the most recent Changelog and Friends episode. Or I guess when this airs, it'll be Changelog and Friends from two weeks ago. 
mentioning kind of alternative sourcing models, potentially a job board, potentially something else. So it's kind of like where we are right now, kind of like rethinking where the show is and where we'd like it to go in the future. So I guess like we can, you know, we can kind of talk about that some. We can talk about how y'all feel at the moment. We can also talk about some of the logistical changes that we're making to the show, which I, I'm i pretty excited about and some that we've already done that I, I think are going pretty well. So I don't know. There's a whole, whole mess of things there to talk about. Uh, someone just pick up and run with it. <laughs> I think one thing that might be useful here is just some context that while a lot of us people making, like we aren't making the show to make money. All of us are not doing that. But in reality, the editor, like we've spoken highly of the editor several times, that process of editing an episode and turning it into a good podcast that doesn't have, you know, lots of random noises that makes us not sound as as bad as we think we do, I guess, at times, all of those things take effort and they have to pay people to do those things. So a lot of the times when we talk about sponsorships and that sort of stuff, I think it's worth noting that it's because of all those extra costs that get thrown in there that that stuff tends to be important. Not because we're like we're all trying to make a bunch of money or something. Not that there's anything wrong with people trying to make money, but I will definitely say that if your goal is to make money, um, hosting the Go Time podcast is not necessarily the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are better ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is not a, a thing that we all do as hosts as a uh, main way to get money into our pockets. That, that's for sure. But I will I will say though, this beats writing a book. <laughs> You know, at least at least you get to have fun, you know, coming on a show and, and talking about. But yeah, if writing a technical book and, you know, with any publisher, honestly, it's uh, those are labors of love and love only. <laughs> you, you don't get paid for those either. So <laughs> I've heard great reasons for doing it, but none of them have ever been money. Like if you're in another no. country trying to get a visa in the U.S., like sometimes writing a book is a great way to like turn you into a, you know, like a expert in that field and things like that which I guess technically could lead to more money, but it's never been like, oh, you just get paid a bunch by the publisher. I've, I've never heard that one. Yeah, so it's definitely the same for, for us here. It's like we do, we do this for, you know, our love of Go and our love of the community uh, and just, you know, produce good content, have fun, say some crazy things, have some very unpopular opinions sometimes, of course. <laughs> so if we do get a sponsor, which we are looking for sponsors, obviously, the money won't be towards you know, lining <laughs> the whole pockets. <laughs> it's going to be for logistics, you know, getting the shows, editing and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, we're also like, you know, thinking up new ideas for how to, you know, sustain not just go time, but also, you know, the whole changelog network, because obviously relying on sponsors, especially in these kind of times we have, with like all of these layoffs and tech and all the other things happening. Uh, you definitely want to kind of diversify your, your stream. So if you listeners out there have any ideas, you're like, oh, this is a perfect idea for how, you know, we could support Go Time or support uh, all of Changelog podcasts, definitely like, you know, hit us up in, in Slack, send an email, do, do, do any of those things. We're always open to, to hearing from our wonderful listeners. Uh, same goes with episode recommendations. If there's anything you really want to hear, make sure to, to send that to us. Ooh, ooh, I have a recommendation. I think we should do a show on layoffs. If we're going to, you know, the non-traditional, well, I think it can be semi-technical, but um, we can we can try and find people in the Go community that have been laid off and, and that way we can keep it Go-centric. But that, that is one of the things that, that affects us, right? So, you know, we've had shows um, around sort of the, the, the softer, the people aspect of things before. And I think that's something that, that that is something that is affecting a lot of our of our uh, colleagues out there. So maybe, yeah, I'll, I'll throw my hat in the ring as a recommendation for for a new, future show. Something about layoffs. Yeah, that that does seem like a, a timely and very uh, apt thing, especially just you know having something to listen to, have other things to to hear if you're going through it yourself. Like I think Changelog, like the main Changelog podcast has had I'm going to butcher his name, but uh, Gerge Orzos. And he has, you know, he comes back every year to talk about, you know, the state of the tech market. And this last one was about the state of kind of layoffs and what tech companies are doing and, and all of that. Um, so having that type of content. I think there's also Justin Garrison a couple of weeks ago had like the silent slacking Amazon episode, which was which was great. So sometimes it's good to have something to just listen to to be like, you're not going through this alone. There's a whole bunch of people experiencing this, unfortunately. Ian, do you have any any thoughts on the on the present, on the things happening, on the on the developments with GoTime? 
Yeah. I mean, well, having a sponsor, not having a sponsor isn't great. I do think it's kind of lit a fire under us a little bit. I think we're more organized now than we've ever been. More committed to getting episodes out every week. More in communication with each other and just planning episodes better. Um, no, I'm, I think I'm just excited about this next year. And I, I'll definitely say, I, I think part of that organization comes from the fact that like we almost need to rotate the panelists every once in a while. Because I, I know like myself as an example, last year I was kind of burnt out and wasn't on that many episodes. And it's sometimes you just either need a break or you got to bring in new people who are eager and excited to like organize and to host a bunch of episodes and to line up a bunch of guests. Because like, like we've said, it is a lot of work at times to get all that done. So it's, I agree, it's, it's definitely lit a fire under us a little bit to do that. But it's also... That's one of the reasons why when you see panelists come and go and things like that, it's almost always because people get busy with life and, and we need somebody else who has that time and flexibility to really focus on organizing episodes. Yeah, that's one of the nice aspects of having uh, seven of us that are panelists on the show is that we can more easily kind of rotate through and, and spread it out. I think that also is, is why the show has had such, uh, such good longevity over the years is because we can kind of shift and move around the uh, the people who are hosting. So yeah, and if if you listener have noticed any of us disappear for a while, as John said, like you know, sometimes life happens, and uh, most of the time we we do come back, which is which is always exciting. It's always fun to be like, ah, I've been gone for a while, but I'm back now, hooray! <laughs> but yeah, one of the one of the big changes we've actually made uh, started making. We we held our first one. We have our second one in the books. Is that we're doing. Uh, for a little kind of behind the scenes meta of how GoTime gets made, we're doing writers' rooms now, which is a, a thing borrowed from the television industry. We kind of all get together on a big meeting, and we kind of brainstorm episode ideas and, and kind of dispatch them for people to you know pick up and carry forward. Which I I don't know if there's other podcasts that are doing something similar to this, but it's definitely like one of the things that's excited me about this year is that like we we actually started doing them, and the first one went so great and. We're actually going to have another one because that's, you know, the first two are always the toughest to like, you know, set the pattern of how to, how to start doing things. So, yeah, how, do, how are you feeling about the show in like in this in this moment? Like how like what are your what are your feelings? about? What are your emotions? How do you, how do you feel? I mean, very I'm very proud. Like I think go time is such a wonderful way to connect with the broader go community. But two, I feel like I've seen so much growth in the newer like the host that joined at my when I first joined but also in like the team's ability to collaborate and ability to kind of feed off of each other in conversation I also think which we'll get into I'm sure a lot of the processes and new structure that we're bringing to how we do go time this next year is only going to help its progression So I think it's just a lot of pride, also excitement because, and we kind of touched on this in my prior answer, the tech space is always really interesting and constantly changing. But I think this year, there's just so much going on and so much new technology, new thinking, new practices that I think are going to come to head or really explode that I'm excited to see where we go. But I'm also very apprehensive because I'm like, oh, Angelica, like you need to start thinking about interesting, cool episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and uh, as as our listeners who just listened to the the present segment of the of the first recording, know, uh, we we are doing a whole bunch of like restructuring. There's there's the kind of the struggles we're going through right now with like you know we need sponsors, but our, our listener base is great. And once again, I'll reiterate it again, listeners, you're all wonderful. I'm so glad that so many of you are here. That we've been able to sustain such good numbers for so long. But I know that one of the things I'm excited about, which I assume is something that you're also excited about, is these writers' rooms that we're doing. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's what I'm super excited about. This is the so this is how I feel bad because I wasn't at the original recording of the episode. But I never I don't know how much has been told already. But no, so arguably actually the writers' room is is um the part of the new structure, the new things we're putting in place. And I say we, the new things that Chris is working really hard as our gopher in chief to help steer the ship forward on. They probably won't say that to themselves, but I will, is the writers' room because it's all of us hosts getting in a room, chit chatting about right. What do we have planned for the next, you know, month or so? What do we want to do? What do we want to talk about? Brainstorming. And for me, 
the reason it's so great and why I'm excited about it and I have no doubt it's going to make go time better is for two reasons. One is it's going to mean that we're going to get our ducks in a row. We are going to know what we're going to talk about and when. We're not going to have two episodes back to back about the same topic. We're going to be able to ensure a diverse range of voices. Like we're not going to have one person hosting every single week for four months, which I'm sure like I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind hearing Johnny every single day. But for those of you who maybe want a diverse range of voices, I think that's going to be awesome. Also, as the kind of somewhat type A in me, I love an organization that has a plan, that knows when and where I need to be. But the other part is that I feel like one of the things that stresses me out the most as a go time host is thinking about interesting topics, who should be on the show, what should we talk about, And even if an idea I have is interesting or not. And so for me, what I'm most excited about personally is coming into that room and being able to just like spitball, like, hey, I've had this idea or hey, I've seen this new package and technology. Is it worth, maybe we should dig into it. Does anyone think it's interesting enough to do an episode on it? And really structure our episodes and building the content we bring to you all in a way that is collaborative. Because I think everyone brainstorming an idea, it's inevitably going to be better than if just like Angelica's brain is trying to think about it on her own. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the writer's rooms, um, I'm so glad with how the first one went. I'm so glad we have another one scheduled because, you know, that's the, that's the, and I mentioned this in the, in the the main part of the show, but that's the thing I'm always like scared of is like when you, you have a good idea like this and it's like, okay, well, does it, does it actually become a thing or is it is it just something that we talk about where it's just like, ah, we should really go do that. And yeah, actually picking up and 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 scheduling things is one of those things I help I think helps a lot. And, uh, you know, interesting, we didn't really mention in the main show that I had kind of had this new role of being like the we don't have titles or anything for it yet, but kind of the pseudo like, I guess, organizer of of go time now. You know, we have our wonderful producer, Jared, who like is super on top of, you know, the whole change log side of things. But we as a group had decided like, hey, we need we probably need one of us to kind of like step up and like, you know, kind of at least do the scheduling, do the like kind of light guidance so that we, you know, aren't just a, you know, seven gophers running around trying to make a whole bunch of content, just doing a, li- a little bit more planning, a little bit more all of that. But yeah, it's always so worrying to me when it's like, oh, no, like, is it are we actually able to carry through with this idea? Or even like, because I know I had a whole bunch of ideas of like how we would structure planning. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Or like, is, are we actually going to be able to produce these episodes? There's like a whole bunch of stuff up in the air. And a lot of it has really started to come together. And it's like really exciting to me that like we might actually be able to start producing like more than just, you know, one episode per week and be able to use that space to create new and more interesting types of content. No, exactly. I think the other part is that if, I have an extremely interesting idea and I'm like, mm, yeah, but like, I don't think I'm the right host for this episode. I think there's a much more well-equipped host in our go time host arsenal Then I'm excited to come to the writer's room and be like, hey, I have this really interesting idea that I think is awesome, but I don't want to host it because I don't think that I'm the right person. I want to be a guest on it. Chris, I think you would be a brilliant host for this. Or vice versa, because I try my best to be more of a facilitator and not take up all the space on my episodes. I kind of prefer to just sit back and facilitate the conversation and give the the guest host. If there's something that I just really want to babble about, I'd be like, hey, Johnny, I really want to babble about my thoughts on the use of go in art. Can you be a host so that I can babble without feeling bad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's... uh. It, it's it's something that we've definitely needed for for a long time, and I'm excited that we finally have it. And yeah, we'll we'll see how things shape up. Uh, you know, as I said in the other segments, listeners, we're always here for your feedback. So if you like, if you're like, man, go time this year, these episodes are just so much better. Like, let us know. Like, give us give us that feedback. Or if you're like, I don't know, I kind of like the the I like some aspects of the old way you did things. It's like let us know that too. Like, we really want to have that feedback to really know like i don't know is this is this the right direction do we need to shift course a little bit like how should we be be thinking about and seeing all of this stuff yeah. so. and on in that vein now that we have more structure i would also re-emphasize to you all if you have episode suggestions or asks like please could you talk about this topic xyz please submit them we are 
looking at them on a regular basis in terms of like episode ideas. So if you have an idea that you want us to talk about or a topic or something that you've seen that you don't know very much about and you want to learn more about, hit us up, you know, submit uh, an ask and uh, maybe we can make it happen for you. Any other comments or thoughts about the present before we move to the to the future? I think, and this might be a good trans transition to the future. I think we have, I've mentioned this many times. I think we have an awesome host, host of hosts, <laughs> group of hosts. And I think everyone brings a really interesting, different perspective to, in terms of like the episodes they put together, their style of hosting, their style of episode, et cetera, et cetera. But that being said, transitioning to the future, I'm really excited at the potential of exploring how we can more intentionally either collaborate together as hosts, get like new voices on the podcast is like my mission for the next year is I want new people, new guests, different levels, different experiences. I mean, I'm always trying to do that in episodes, but I think setting the intention that I want to get new gophers, people who have been in the community for a very short amount of time or have been in the community for ages, but just have never, you know, had a more public forum that they've expressed themselves on. Subject to them wanting to live your best lives, gophers who do not want to be in any kind of public forum. But if you are a gopher who would like that, but maybe you haven't had the opportunity or you don't know how, or you're nervous, like I... I love talking to people who have great ideas and then I go, oh, have you ever thought about talking about this really cool idea that you talk about really well on like a podcast or submitting a talk? And they're like, oh no, I could never do that. And then like they bring them on the podcast and they leave being like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I could do that. And kind of re-energized. So, yeah, so I'm excited about that. So I'm, I'm super excited about those, but I'm also excited about what that means for the the future, as you were saying, Ian, like the more the higher level consistency in our episodes, because I'm sure listeners, if if you are like Jared, who has a whole bunch of podcasts you listen to and you have specific slots, there have been some times when go time is just missing a week or two here. And we're we're definitely working hard this year on making sure that we can ship episodes consistently, kind of get one out every week. So if we do wind up in your regular rotation of podcast episodes, which thank you so much for for putting us in that position, uh, we want to we want to do right by you and actually stay in that rotation. And we don't actually give you an episode every week. We'll try our best to to do that. So yeah, with that, I think we can we can turn to the future and the exciting things that we're we're going to talk about. This episode is titled, at least tentatively, uh, 300 multiple choices, which for you HTTP nerds out there, is the status code of when you want to, of when the server gives you multiple choices of what representation you want back for a specific resource that you've queried, which I, which I think is apt for where we are right now as a podcast, because we have multiple choices of, of how we move forward. And we would really like to solicit the input from, from our listeners as to kind of what kind of content you want to hear. So I think it'd be fun for this part of the episode to just go over uh, what a couple of those things are. Maybe what our, our favorite thing that we're going to try and start doing is. I know for me, one of my, I guess, I have I have a top, I have two top ones that I like. I'm super excited about the prospect of doing more game shows. We've done a bunch of them in the past. We've done Gopher Says or Gophers Say. I never remember if it's Gophers Say or Gopher Says. Either one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the Family Feud style survey says sort of thing. Those are super fun, and hopefully we'll be able to come up with some with some new game shows. Uh, if you have any ideas, send them over to Jared. He's our he's our game show savant that we have. So I'm super excited for that, and I'm super excited to uh, try and get some some more mini series going because I think those are those are a nice little like gives you a little bit more than a single episode on something. And we have some plans and ideas about how to make those uh, more impactful in the future. So that's that's what I'm excited about. Johnny, what what excites you for the the future of content that we're going to do? I want to strike a balance between the deep technical dives and uh, not so deep technical dives, with you know a, a sprinkle of fun added on whichever one we're doing. Right, so I do know that you know, part of our audience does enjoy sort of the non technical content. Right, we've had talks on on managing people. We've had talks on 
sort of a, a mental health and related things. We've had lots of different things. And we've also had, you know, deep technical conversations. And I know, you know some people prefer, you know, one side versus the other, right? So I think whichever direction we go, I think we should try, whether it's within the same episode or, you know, different kinds of episodes, we should definitely sort of cater to both kinds of audiences, um, you know, to make sure that we've got a little something for everybody. Yeah, I definitely Definitely agree with you on that, like the the balance. And I feel like our writers rooms will help us help us with that because, you know, for reference for our listeners out there, the way it used to work is we'd all kind of come up with our own ideas. And for a while, like, you know, there'd be one or two people planning out a whole bunch of episodes. And now that we're kind of doing this kind of collaborative thing, we have more ability to, to be more consistent, not just with shipping episodes, but also with what those episodes will be to make sure that we can get that, you know, better mix of content so we can kind of have a wider purview of the things we're talking about. Yeah, just to slide in on that a little bit, like I think I'm excited for episodes like this one where it's just panelists and we can just come up with something and talk about it. I think in the past with the the model we had where everyone had to come up with an episode and we're kind of independent, uh, this writer room process, I think we can really do more episodes where it's just like collaborative discussion about a topic, right? It doesn't need to be a special guest or that. Um, and these are really fun to make, so I, I hope they're also fun to listen to. Yeah, how the sausage is made with Ian. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not not as as inside baseball as this one, but you know, like where we just talk about a topic instead of having a special guest on or a. I know we already do that, but I don't know it's not common. Yeah, it's not common. Like I had that on my list too. Is like in the past, it's it's not like we felt like you have to have a guest. But it's definitely been the first thing you do with a subject has been look for a guest that we can bring on. And part of that's because we want to bring new people in to speak about subjects and you know get lots of different varying opinions. But it is it's kind of exciting to think about like how can we mix in a few episodes that are just panelists that are, whether it's like a fireside chat or a game show or, or something like this, or we just pick a topic and we all talk about it. I'm excited about those ones. I, I think another one that I'd like to, you know, if we have if we can find ways to do it, It'd be fun to also do some more episodes that are more like debates or like opposing views on something to bring in two different people who have kind of opposite ends of the the spectrum, you know, are, are viewing things from different ends and see, you know, what, what things they agree on, which things they disagree on. Because somebody just reached out to me recently about one of those. And, and I think that's one of those ones that it's easy to think there's one way to do stuff. But when you see two experts in the field who have very differing views on something, it's kind of enlightening to realize, okay, it's it's not just a, a binary, you know, one way or the other type thing. Um, there's lots of middle ground. Yeah, that that sounds like fun. I'm I'm always up for for having a a, a debate, a, li- a little conversation of opposing viewpoints. Although I feel like a bunch of the episodes Johnny and I are on, a lot of them become like. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not not polar opposite views, but slightly different views of things. And I, I do feel like that kind of that enhances enhances things a little bit because there's there's that habit of like when I, it's like an echo chamber at some point if everybody agrees on something and it's just kind of like nah, but what about the not necessarily the other side but what about other perspectives the the writer in me is like there's more than two sides there's a there's an infinite number of sides everyone has their own perspective we should and I'm like let's let's surface some more of that for sure I also have like there's this there's kind of mini mini series idea that I have and I'd love to kind of hear from you listeners about what you think about this because you know usually when we do have guests on the show they are you know experts on something and you know there's obviously us and we're not we're I guess experts in our own way but I had this idea of having like a little a little series don't really know what to call it yet maybe like tales from the horde or like tales of the concurrency depending on you know how cuz you know i think i think it was at gophercon this past year that russ cox was like we should call uh, a collective noun for gophers a concurrency so i think that's kind of catching on but the idea would be to have you know regular old listeners hop on hop on the show with us and kind of talk through what their experience with go has been and you know how they got started what advice they might have for other people um, just as a way to, you know, get some, get some other voices out here, not just like the, the experts. Cause I think it, I think it does help cause you know, we're, we're not special people. We're just regular people at the end of the day. And, you know, so are the, the experts we have on. Um, and I think there is that, that barrier cause you know, when you're a speaker or when you host a podcast, all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, you're, you're super special now. And it's like, no, we're just, just regular folks. And you too can be, you know, a regular folk on a podcast or giving a talk sort of thing. 
so yeah, if you think that's a if you think that's a good idea, uh, let us know. Give us some feedback and email and Slack and and wherever. I disagree with you, Chris. I think I am special. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, John. You you can you can be special. Thank that, you. That, that, we'll, Thank you. We'll allow that. <laughs> I'd say probably the main difference between us and somebody new on the show is is how nervous they are. That's probably the main difference. Yeah, yeah. I I still remember like the first time I was on the podcast. It was as a guest, and I remember I was like trying so hard to get my qu- apartment as quiet as possible so that my mic so my mic would sound good. But I didn't even have like a real mic. So it was just like using my laptop mic. And it was the whole thing. I was just like, so nervous. And I kind of go back now and I hear the audio quality and I'm like, oh, good. Good mics are, are an important part of this. But it's also like, ah, I don't think anybody really cared. They just like kind of want to hear what what people have to say. Oh, people do uh, care about your audio. Your video can be crap, but your audio, <laughs> it's got to be good. <laughs> It's got to be good. I'm not, I'm not saying you can have terrible audio, but like if you don't have, so like, we don't want to chase guests off, Johnny. <laughs> if if you if you don't have like a like a SM7B or like a really nice microphone, it's it's okay. Like you can still come on and and it'll it'll be fine. Our editors will do great work with the audio. My microphone and software just shows up as microphone. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just this is generic. It's just a generic brand. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't think I sound terrible though. No, no, you sound you, good right now. You sound good. Uh, yeah, um, probably because you don't have your your microphone backwards like that one time. <laughs> that that <did> happen. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he sound so far away? <laughs> that's because you have it upside down, Ian. No, that's literally we were like Ian. Why? <laughs> It, it was it was an up, it was it was backwards. It wasn't upside down. So, I mean, same difference, right? I mean, upside down might have been. <laughs> Sometimes the polar patterns on microphones are a little hard to ascertain. And, yeah, but yeah, yeah. So even even us on the podcast, your listeners, uh, sometimes make make goofs. I've definitely there was one episode, and I think it was a good episode too, because a clip of it on YouTube Shorts or maybe it's on TikTok of me saying something like real good, but I'd accidentally selected the audio from my camera instead of my microphone in Riverside. So it just sounds like I'm in this cavernous room and I'm just like, oh, this sounds this sounds so bad. Why did it why didn't anybody tell me that my my audio was bad? And I guess now we're we're back with uh, me and Angelica. <laughs> I assume there was like some nice little audio thing and then there's a whole other segment and now we're back with us. But for us, no time has passed because of the magic of recording and editing. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, at the end of that, at the end of the, the present segment, you were talking about, you know, getting new gophers on. And that was actually one of the things that I was excited about for the new types of content. Like I, I and, and our first writers room pitched this idea of, uh, in general, just doing more miniseries. But one of the miniseries I wanted to do was was kind of, once again, still don't really know the name for it, like Tales from the Horde or Tales of the Concurrency or something like that. Of Let's get some like regular like gophers, like not you know, big name people, not us, but someone who's just like, I know I've been writing Go for a while, don't have a high profile and, you know, have them on to talk about, you know, their experience with Go, what advice they would have for for people in the community and all that sort of stuff. And that feels like it aligns really well with what, you know, you were just talking about with that whole idea of like, let's get more voices. Let's use this platform we have to kind of help elevate other people in, in whatever way we can. No, for sure. Um, I think that's awesome. Uh, I also think, and I think this was in our first writer's room that we chatted a little bit about this, the idea of like, for those of you who are in Go for Slack, for those of you who aren't, you should please join Go for Slack. I love Go for Slack because it's just this like random outbursts of, oh, look at this cool project I did. Oh, have you read this article? Oh, have you done this thing? Or, oh, look at this. Have you, has anyone ever thought about generating an image of a cow using Go? Like, it's a wonderful, just rich, conversational oasis that I would love for us to pull from. And, like, I don't know, and I think it's similar to, to yours. It's like, what's happening in Go Slack? Like, what's the chit-chat in the community? Like, what's some random thing? It's almost like, um, what's that account? like things I've heard on the streets of New York where you hear like the randomest things, like maybe some sort of like heard on go for Slack <laughs> and then <laughs> a discussion. But I think really pulling, we have such a rich community and I think 
there is, we do pull from the community a lot, but I think being more intentional and actually having, as you said, like voices who are not like the top known gophers, just like regular day to day people who write go, who are part of our community and, and kind of elevating them, I think will be awesome. I think like the beauty of go time is that we can be at those many levels. We can have people who are just joining the Go community. We can also get the Russ Cox of the world on the podcast. Like, I think the beauty is that we can bring all those different voices together. And I think we're uniquely placed to do that on the podcast. And I'm excited to um, try and intentionally do that more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That could actually be like a fun little segment that we could add of just like, I don't know, overheard on Gopher Slack. It's just like, what... You know, interesting things that people have been up to, how people have been saying, you know, there's some some prime candidate channels for that, too. Like the Dark Arts channel is always yeah. fascinating, the types of things that people are trying to do. And you're like, oh, that's, you know, that is some that is some dark, some dark arts right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are, are there any is there any like content or any guests that you think we should bring up, bring back? I know you mentioned uh, bringing back uh, Luis Villa. Yes. Which would be absolutely great. I, I enjoyed so much the episodes that we did with him. Um, and just like having that conversation with him was fantastic. But, you know, any other any other types of content, any guess? I mean, I'm on a I'm on a mission to try and find like uncommon uses of Go, like weird and wonderful ways that Go is being used. So I think I'd love to and things that aren't broadly applicable, like things that are like one time use cases, like I built a automated dinosaur that does X, Y, Z every time I open my desktop and it's built in Go. For no apparent reason, but it's just a bit fun. On a more serious note, and I think I keep saying this because it just, you can tell this is like, the it's the topic, it's the topic of the year, spoken like a typical corporate girly, is ML and AI. I'm just excited to think through in the writer's rooms how we can bring unique, interesting takes on this extremely impactful, awesome topic. Because I think there's a lot of noise around ML and AI. There's a lot of interesting conversations being had, but I really am excited to think through with the rest of the hosts in our writer's room, how we can bring interesting topics, interesting uses of AI and ML to the broader population, but also specific to Go, like thinking through like, how is Go playing into this space? Like, is Go ever going to be able to compete with, you know, some of these other languages when it comes to, like, large language model writing, data processing required for these kind of operations? Big question mark. And I think having those conversations, and I guess maybe unpopular opinion, but we don't, I don't know whether we're doing unpopular opinions, like, I don't know how well Go is set up to, like, operate in that world effectively and i really would like to dig into that <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm curious as to like because you know it's easy to be like hyper fixated on like what the hype cycle yeah. is currently occupied by and like, i'm like interested of like well what what happens when the hype cycle inevitably moves on which i think like everybody right now like because we're in the hype cycle is just like the hype cycle is not going to move on move on but it's like i don't know like i've said this before it's been on popular opinion before it's just like Bitcoin cryptocurrency was also the huge hype cycle that everybody yeah. was talking about. And it's now been replaced with AI. And it's just like before that, like there's always a hype cycle. There's always something in it. Like I think there's a lot of interesting things that come out of the – like once the hype cycle moved on and you're left with these technologies of like, well, what can you actually do with these technologies? What are interesting applications of them? Like I think that's happening now with like blockchain and how people are thinking about blockchain in kind of new and novel ways of like, oh, well, there's – or like even this like the, the components or the concepts of a blockchain irrespective of like the implementation of it. And I think that AI as a space has the same sort of potential where it's like once we can actually really kind of get into the nuance of it. Because I feel like that that's kind of what follows – those big hype cycles is the hype cycle is like the lack of nuance and that lack of nuance allows us to imagine literally anything. And we're like, people doomerize it. People are like super excited about it, but everybody is just, there's like a whole lack of nuance around most of it. And then you start getting a lot of that nuance and the, the hype comes down and you start being like, Oh, these are the interesting places where this technology can actually go. And I think that go as a language it's positioned in a special place because I think it is like I mean as a language of the cloud. 
I feel like it's going to play a role in all of this, but not, but like a different role, a complementary role. So it's not going to be like, I don't think it's going to be the language you use to necessarily write large language models or do the things that other languages are currently good for. But I think it's going to be, it's going to be somewhere in there, probably playing a very foundational part, kind of like with the cloud, right? Like Go is certainly not like, you don't have to write all of your services in Go. In fact, you might not even write Go in general, but it's most definitely like it's all over the place in, in, in the cloud world and in, in that whole thing. So I think I think there's space. But yeah, that'd be it'd be super interesting to explore that like in the pod, on the podcast and have people in. Um, I think it was I don't remember who in the in the who brought it up, but someone brought up the idea of like kind of like not necessarily debate, but like different viewpoint episodes where you bring in people that have not necessarily opposing views, but differing views. And you have like a conversation. So I think that, that would also be you know interesting in, in this space, but also just in general for us as like a go podcast, because there's a lot of things in go where it's like, I don't know, like the answer is uh, it depends, which also is if there, there's there's two episodes basically of this on changelog and friends of it depends, there's an it dependencies, okay. and then there's an it depends with me. So listeners, if you if you like that kind of like, I, I don't know, the answer is it depends. Go go over to Changelog and Friends and listen to that. So there's that. I think the other thing that I've been, that I'm excited about slash subject to me bringing this up in our next writer's room <laughs> is the idea of Go Time as like a learning tool. Uh, for those of you who don't know me and those of you who do, I am a massive advocate slash I'm always thinking like, is this accessible for the newbie? And when I mean the newbie, I don't mean new to go. I mean, like, they have never written a line of code in their life, newbie. Like, they are learning Hello World, newbie. Or they can just stand up a super simple Hello World uh, website with Go as the back end. And thinking through how, given that, you know, we're more open to experimenting with, like, having video and audio, having audio that has a little bit more structure to it, as opposed to the more discussion base that we do for most of our episodes. I'm excited to think through and really brainstorm with the group how and if it's appropriate for us to have episodes like, let's talk through this basic concept, like learn with our learn with your go time hosts, this new thing, this new concept, working off of some of our, again, shameless plug, wonderful hosts own work that they do in their lives thinking about learning new concepts exploring new concepts there might be a host who has a very intriguing forum that you can check out to learn about things <laughs> hint hint nudge hint, nudge hint, chris nudge, nudge. Shall I go yeah, on? No, I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> one day i will i will actually announce my exciting announcement but today is not that day i know so. i gotta keep these go time listeners on their toes <laughs> But no, that's what I'm really interested in, is how can we use GoTime as a forum to teach and to learn? Is there a possibility for us to, I hate to say it, but is there a way for us to talk through code? Is there a way for us to think through a concept in a way that maybe we don't need the visuals, but by making sure that we're structured, we're speaking slow? You know, I'm just, it's something I'm playing with that I think could be a really interesting new avenue for GoTime to think through. Yeah. I, I like that. That's uh, I'm definitely excited. It gives me it gives me a lot of excitement for the future. We have all these great ideas, and you know, when I was talking with John and Johnny and Ian, there was so many other like hilarious ideas. In, the, in that same respect, I mean, the listeners would have just heard this, but there's this whole idea of like, I don't know, should we have like a pip my code sort of thing? Like you submit your code, and we we tell you how to fix it and how to make it better or what's bad with it, and. There's all sorts of like that. fun ideas that we can really that we can at least try and and see how they land. And I'm I'm once again super excited that our new structure will actually be able to give us the ability to kind of you know take on some more risky content. Like maybe we record an episode and it just doesn't do well, and we're like, oh, we we don't or we don't think it's good enough to put out. So we're like, okay, well we can scrap that episode. We'll still be okay. That's the type of freedom that I think as creative people we uh, we really need. All right. So with that, do you have anything else you want to say about the the future of the podcast or anything that you're you're excited about? Future of the podcast. Future of the podcast is bright, beautiful, and full with butterflies and rainbows. I'm ready. I'm excited. It's going to be great. We have a ragtag group of wonderful hosts and gophers all coming together. And I'm excited for us to turn from a somewhat of a 
tapestry of ideas and episodes, each unique but individual, to somewhat more of a Picasso, all splattered together and merged into a beautiful mosaic of magic brilliance. Wait, speaking of TikTok, I heard like one of the editors reached out to me, I don't know, late last year and said, hey, you want to get on TikTok so you can defend an unpopular opinion? People are like saying stuff. I'm like, TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 44 years old, man. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, for, you don't for, I mean, for, your hey, for, for those, for those who, you know, who are, who are, or, you know, my age and older. And you, if you TikTok, that's cool. That's fine. Like, no, no, no qualms about it. But like, it's one of those things where I'm like, there's a threshold. <laughs> that's what I tell myself. I'm like, there's a threshold, right? At, at some point I have to stop you know, trying to use things like, you know, my kids are using and stuff, you know, <laughs> like TikTok, TikTok didn't make the cutoff for me. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, let them talk. The threshold is age-based? Do you think it's age-based or, or the fact that you have kids and how old they are? You know, that's, that's a good point. I think it might be because, probably because of my kids, I think. Because I think if you didn't have kids and you had more time, you might be like, yeah, I'll try that. Yeah, the if I had more time part, they, they, <laughs> that probably would have affected it as well. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, yeah yeah, I think that's that's the kids being on it probably is the if my kids are finding something you know popular and they're engaging with it, that's my that tells me right. I'll I'll, I'll check it out because I'm a parent. I have to you know see what they're consuming. But beyond that, I'm not gonna be start using it like myself. Right? That to me, that's the threshold. That if they're using it, if that's something that my kids do then that's a you know that that means it's not for me i'm not the demographic for it i'm not the target audience there are some very old people on tiktok johnny i'm sure there are i'm sure there are there are or there will always be outliers there will always be special cases that's fine i recognize that but you know i'm i'm yeah but i'm not i'm not one of those i'm okay with that although you are on TikTok, just not your own TikTok, um, yeah, exactly. right? <laughs> Change log has posted. That's what, you know, I thought I was keeping a real low profile and posted anything on TikTok or anything like that. And then well, I think someone pinged. I think Jason, yeah, might have pinged me as well being like, hey, like this thing on TikTok's going. I'm like, wait, you, you have videos of me on TikTok? Like, what, what do you mean? And then I was like, it. oh, there's, there's a lot of videos with me talking. I'm on like, TikTok. oh, God. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. So... To that point, Chris, I'll say that there's also a lot of people who update their computer every time that an update comes out, and I am definitely not one of them at this point. Mm -mm. So, it's different people. So, so you're a security risk. You're saying <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. The, the, the SR in me is like, hmm. I mean, I get, I get them eventually. It's more the major ones. Like, I'll do all the small ones that are security updates. But when it's like, hey, go to this whole new version of the OS. I'm like, I don't know about doing that like as an early adopter. Yeah, I mean, I did that a couple weeks ago and I thought everything was fine, except for the part where Mac OS decided to eat up all of, or APFS decided to eat up all my disk space and not give it back and lose it, which I don't know how happens with the file system. But but then I actually tried to get on an episode, I think it was, yeah, like the Kafka episode a couple of weeks ago and like nothing was working. And I was like, what? And I was like, oh, I upgraded my computer and everything broke. It's like, ah, oh, ah, oh, great. So I feel like there, there are good reasons not to, to upgrade to the latest major OS. Look, just buy a new machine. When the new OS comes out, just buy a new machine with that OS on it. Okay. Just that's that's the upgrade cycle. All right. <laughs> if, if it's patches, you're fine. <laughs> so if it's a new OS version, just get a new machine. <laughs> Johnny, have you seen the prices of, of Apple products? <laughs> But yeah, how, how much time have you spent, you know, trying to recover from an OS upgrade? I don't know. That adds up too. Just saying. I mean, I mean it does, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're training a man, it could be a little bit better. It's just it's still like some of these Apple products. I'm like, oh. all right. So back from that tangent. Uh, so yeah, I think we're kind of we're kind of at the at the end here. So we've talked about the past. Uh, we've talked about the present. We've talked about the future. Is there anything anything else in these areas we want to talk? Yeah, I'm kind of talk about any any new segment ideas they recover alternate universes alternate like the the universe where you were on the original go time and you've been you've been doing it for eight oh. years right? oh you have to put your <laughs> finger in it oh. <laughs> oh. you brought it up <laughs> <laughs> all right i know what my unpopular opinion is gonna be <laughs> i mean it's it's more and more sounding like we're going to have a once every 
quarter we're gonna have like a roast episode or something because Ooh. I feel like we're very heavily going down the Ooh. Path. Oh, I'm up for that. <laughs> oh. Ooh. I just feel like it could be taken very poorly. <laughs> the roast of the gophers. Go for a roast. Especially if it's like we're gonna roast these open source libraries or something. Oh like, meant to be in fun, but I could see it coming very fast. <laughs> oh, that will get you canceled, John. I know it's <laughs> a danger there. That sounds like so much fun, but no. <laughs> Uh, no, it, ha- it has to be people that we that we like <laughs> volunteers. Are, yeah, like uh, send us your library so we can roast it. Oh, that's a great idea. Listen, listen, listen. We should we should definitely put that on on Twitter, TikTok, and whatever else the kids are on these days. Like, ask them. Hey, like, would you be up for sending us your library so we can roast it, and we can literally go through and be like. Look at this idiot, you know, not, not, you know, capturing the, the, the shadowed variable right there. Look at, you know, firing off go routines with the same, you know, value for this. Very, look, 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 just, just go through and just, you know, just, just completely demoralize somebody. <laughs> <laughs> just for the record, I'm not, I'm not saying we do that. I'm just saying in an alternate universe, and that's what we're talking about, in an alternate universe, we could totally mm. tear down somebody else's code. In, in order to learn from it, obviously, right? Not just to be mean. Yeah, it it uh, it be it be like those shows you have where you're like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna rip the thing apart so you can so you can grow, so you can learn, yeah, yeah. so you can grow from it, so you can get better. Yeah. I've always wanted to see like a, a video or a show like where people do those like take home interviews and then roast each other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you can learn a lot from that. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! I, I, these are these are some these are some uh, ideas. Not necessarily good ones, but <laughs> <laughs> they are they are fun. I don't know if they are good. Right. right, that's they're dangerous in the sense that you have to have the right person with the right tone and personality to pull it off. Otherwise, it just comes across as very mean. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, don't do this in text in a pull request. <laughs> Yeah, sarcasm does it really doesn't translate well in text, you know? <laughs> oh god. It really 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 doesn't help. Yeah, so that's mm-hmm. oof. So yeah, if if uh listeners though, if if you're liking these ideas, like let us know or if you want to volunteer your own library yeah. to get to get roasted in in good fun. Suggest a show. Um, put your put yeah. your library in there and we'll let you know. We'll let you know if it's roast rate, worthy. Rate my library, you know. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah, or pimp my lib, yo. Or pimp my lib. <laughs> <laughs> we could have, we could have exhibit uh, come on the show. <laughs> what would that just, even look like? And just help us pimp a lib, you know what I mean? <laughs> Are we gonna like take a library, that, like an application with ten users, and we're gonna I, be like, I want to do this. We're now. gonna scale it up to. A, 20 servers and do all these random things with it. <laughs> yeah, just, just sprinkle, sprinkle some go routines wherever we can, you know? I mean, just, to, <laughs> you know? Yo, yeah, this could work. <laughs> well, some go routines here, some channels there, yeah. uh, some oh, overuse man. of reflection and generics over there. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. These, these sounds like they could be interesting, like hybrid game shows. <laughs> just, just a little bit of fun. All right, all right. So, do you do you all have uh, before, we, before we move on to unpopular opinions? Assuming, I mean, John already said he has one, so we're good to go. Assuming that you know uh, we're going to go to unpopular opinions. Like, what what? Uh, any last words about you know go go time? Multiple choices. Our our future is is out there. Uh, what? Uh, any any closing words? Closing thoughts? We need sponsors. Step up or get your employer to step up. You know. Wherever you can go to that has that has cash, that has money, tell them we need some of it. Yeah, that that that's true. We do we do need sponsors uh, or other ideas for for supporting financially supporting the show. All right, and with that, then we'll we'll go to uh, to unpopular opinions. I actually think you should probably leave. There is something I was thinking about today. It's kind of hot off the presses, unpopular opinion. But I think that uh, we need to 
retire a lot of the words that we use and and come up with some new ones because I feel like the ones we have have just gained so much cruft around them. So I think good candidates for this are words like API in the distributed systems world, things like cap or consistency. Not saying that we should jettison these ideas. The ideas are good, but I think we need to, like they've evolved to the point where the word we used to use to describe the thing describes too many things. So we need new words to replace those things kind of individually identify what the thing we're trying to talk about is. So in the world of distributed systems, you know, talking about convergence instead of consistency, because I think when people hear consistency, they think of a whole bunch of different things and they get confused. But I think if you say convergence, it's kind of more clear what you're talking about and gives us new space to kind of redefine those things. Or with cap, instead of trying to beat cap, thinking about kind of the wider purview of, of distributed systems. And with APIs, uh, well, the whole API that landscape one, is just so... API is such a vague one now. <laughs> like I, I was thinking about this today because I've been reading, I, I, I finally finished reading through the REST dissertation, I'm reading the Hypermedia Systems book, Systems book. I, I'm reading a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm just like, man, our use of the word API is just... It's like everything's an API. Like, what isn't an API? This word, like, everything's become such an... It's like, this word doesn't mean anything anymore. We need to, to retire and get some new ones. Also... That front and back end, we need to jettison that nonsense Ooh, as well. What? Uh, what, what do you want to call it? What do you call the front end and back end? Well, I, I think we should jettison the words because I think that, oh God, this is probably another unpopular opinion. But I think that like before, and this is a lot of this is informed from the rest dissertation, but before front end and back end was in the same trust domain. So it was like you're writing front end, but it's within the same code base and within the same kind of server process as the back end. So if you think like Rails or you think of like any of the PHP frameworks, you're writing front end code, you're writing HTML and CSS and JavaScript, but you're in the same trust domain of the server. You're not like an external entity calling an API to just grab some stuff. But now with the way that we've changed things, we have like React and all these front end frameworks, they exist not in the same trust boundary, not in the same organizational boundary as the back end or as the server is. So you can't necessarily trust like you like it was fine before to make an SQL query from the from the quote unquote front end. Like you probably shouldn't for a variety of reasons, but it's not like a dangerous thing necessarily to do. But if if you were like, oh, I'm going to make an SQL query for my React application, people would be like, what are you doing? That's not okay." And the reason it's not okay is because like you're in a different trust domain now. So I think the thing that we're doing has shifted, but we haven't shifted our language. So we have to kind of recognize that it's like, oh, we have these kind of applications that are using our servers, but it's not necessarily, you know, front end, back end in the same way anymore. Because I think there's now multiple applications too. So it's better to think about it as like, one of my friends put up the word like application engineering and thinking about the applications and the different applications you have. Also, I think it doesn't really help when we have uh, microservices, which also have the same kind of trust domain issue where it's like they actually exist in different trust domain. That's the point of microservices. So it's like, I think backend kind of clumps all of those things together. And when it's like, actually, there's like a whole variety of stuff happening back there. I think the same is true of front end. So I think we need, we need some new words, like the, the stack that we started with back in the days, back when we had like the lamp stack and all of that. That's not what the world looks like anymore. We have a very different looking world. So we should, we should get some new words, some new terms that better describe what we have and, and give us the right in the kind of view of the system in our mind. Because I think when we say back end, front end, I think it's really easy to think like, oh, these two things are like two pieces of the same system and, that, and we should think about them as part of the same you know, organizational zone and trust zone and all of that. And it, it, it's really not. So I'll challenge that notion by saying that I don't think we need new terminology for old things. I think we need new terminology for new things, but for older things that have become ambiguous, you need to disambiguate with context. So when you tell me front end, you're not telling me it's the front end to the different services, aka a load balancer. You're, you're telling me it's the front end, it's a user interface front end. So rather than tell confusing me and talking about front end within this context of a you know, purely back-end services kind of thing, whereby you're expecting me to understand that you mean, oh, you mean the front-end, the, the thing that fronts the, the the services? You mean the load balancer? Like, no, give me the context. Say, hey, no, 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 I'm talking about the user interface, right? The, the thing that the user is going to interact with. So that's, th- there's already words, right? Like, we're the ones screwing up the, the whole, you know, uh, uh, nomenclature, right? There's already words to describe 
what it is that we want to describe. We're just overloading those terms, right? So when somebody tells me a front end to the servers, I'm like, mm, that that's a little confusing. Can you just call it the load balancer, please? Or something like that, right? So I don't mind, depending on who I'm talking to in the context, I can sort of bring the clarification so that we're all on the same page by basically saying, hey, can we use this terminology instead? That way everybody, right, who's not, doesn't have all the context for this thing understands what it is that we're talking about when we relay this thing, you know, outside of this organization, right? Or just use the appropriate term, right? So I don't want to use, I don't want to bring up yet new terminology, right, for the same old things. But I think that's kind of like my, the new terms don't have to be like newly created words, but just better ways of describing the things, like new ways of describing the things that we, we have been talking about. Kind of basically what you're saying, where it's like, okay, you said the word front end, what do you mean? What front end? In what context? In what way? So we want the more specific, I guess a way to put it would be, we need more specific words than what we generally use. And, and I think that's just a, it's just a factor of time, really. It's just like, yeah, I think it, it made sense for a long time to call it front end and back end. I think there was a very long tail of where those terms were very clear about what you were talking about. But I think we've, we've, Somewhere along that line, somewhere in the last 10 years, we moved away from that, where now it's like the front end and back end don't necessarily describe things as well as they do. And there's a whole bunch of people that like don't want to identify as a front end or back end person. Like, I want to be an engineer or I want to be this specific thing. Or I want to be that specific. Thing, right. So I think we need like a, a, a broader set of terms to use to add that nuance. Because, yeah, I mean, as I said about like consistency, right, I don't think we should get rid of the word consistency or the underlying concepts. I think we need to do a little rearranging of the words that we associate with concepts so we have an easier way to disambiguate things without trying to like hand wavy and, and, and describe what we're saying with other messy words. And then we will immediately overload those words and we'll be in the same spot. <laughs> yes, that's how language works, Ian. <laughs> I mean, that that's this is this is not like a, I think we should come up with new words and then we're done, right? It's like no, this is this is what it looks like to evolve language, right? It's like you make new words; those words might not, or you reuse old words, then you kind of evolve them, and and then those words get overloaded, so then you make new words, and so that's that's the nature, especially with an industry that's evolving like ours. Um, I just think we haven't been doing that. So we're just kind of kind of stuck. We're overloading too many of the old words. And I mean, that's how API got to be, you know, where it is, right? Like API used to be like something I'm like programming against. It used to be this very specific like library sort of thing. And now it's just kind of like, oh, no, it's anything that vaguely looks like you're programming against it is is an, I think it's gotten to this kind of literal sense of the the word. So I'm sure part of that is that people are communicating via like text messages like Twitter or stuff like that far more often. So you have less room to write as much as you'd want to for context necessarily. Like Twitter is an example. If you're trying to write JSON web API or something versus just API, well, that's a good way to save like eight, 10 characters. So it's like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and just write API. I also think it's as you get new people in, like those people don't necessarily learn about the history. Like I think this was my part of like related to my unpopular opinion from the Kafka episode is that like as you get new people in, those people don't learn the history so they don't understand the things, especially the things where like those things are bad. So sometimes people don't understand why those things are bad and, you know, they wind up reinventing them or, or whatever. Like I think there's this whole renaissance of like server side rendering and, and I think most of us that were like around in the early 2010s or in the late aughts or mid aughts are like, you mean like all of the frameworks we had, like Rails and and Drupal and basically anything with PHP or Py like any of these things, you're just rendering everything on the server. You mean we're doing that again? And people are like, oh, I guess so, yeah. It's like we have a, you know, I don't know if it's a, I, I just don't remember us calling it server-side rendering back then, but like that's a new term that we have. That's I mean, I, I agree with you that we didn't really need a term for it because it was just, that was the way it was. Like it was like a dynamic page versus a static page is kind of the real differentiator. Whereas now, if you say dynamic page, like nobody really knows if that's a, you know, a JavaScript page that's rendered in the browser or if it's something that's done on the server, but either one can be dynamic. This sounds like it could be a whole episode. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure that would make my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you feel, Ian. Once again, we really like going down that roast route. <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad. I'll try to lighten it up. 
<laughs> nah, nah, it's it's okay. I kind of roasted you earlier with that microphone comment. So, so. so. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. All right. So my unpopular opinion is the handle and your toaster. When you put bread in your toaster to toast it, when you push that down, that's your application programming interface. That's your API. <laughs> Uh, for the same reason, your steering wheel, that's your API <laughs> for your car. Um, no? I see it. <laughs> I see it. So for reasons that would be like a whole whole series, I actually agree with you, Johnny. Because I have, I have this whole thing that I'm developing that I'm starting to write about of, uh, you know, what is computing and where does computing exist? So, yeah, no, those, those are interfaces that people use to interact with other they're I don't know if like programming is the way we necessarily think about it. That's kind of borrowing terminology from digital computers and applying them to non-digital computers. But yeah, no, no, it's it's it serves the same purpose. I mean, you, I mean, you get behind the wheel of a modern, you know, electric vehicle these days. I mean, everything is through that damn dash, you know, the damn iPad <laughs> in the middle of the screen. You, <laughs> you're basically programming the thing. <laughs> I mean, for the last like many, many, many years, most cars are just like a giant computer on wheels or like many computers on wheels. It's a big old distributed system on wheels. But oh, I, I, I think I agree with that, Johnny. I think that is it's a, it's a form of application programming <laughs> interface. Well, the people will decide as they always do. Yes. And hopefully we will be unpopular. Uh, not we, <laughs> we, have have, we, have, we have problems. <laughs> My unpopular opinion and please edit this out if you think it's going to be too much of an unpopular opinion, is that we should re-record the unpopular opinion chime to include newer, fresher voices. Oh. For those who can't see me, I'm <laughs> avidly raising my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> so your unpopular opinion is that uh, our unpopular opinion music is uh, it's too old and we need some yeah. fresh some fresh beats. I mean, I'm happy to directly quote Mac Ryer's lines in my accent. Like, I think you should leave now. Well, you know, we're up the posh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> I'll leave it to, to, to the editors to decide whether that'll stay in. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's a, it's it's a it's an interesting unpopular opinion. I am I am curious to see if our audience, you know. Would like some new jingles. Yeah, I mean, new jingles. That's the unpopular opinion. I think we should. We have a wonderful array of new hosts. We have a wonderful array of new voices and creative individuals. Why not upgrade all our jingles to reflect the new generation of Go Time voices? Yeah, get some Breakmaster Cylinder in there as well. Um, yeah. And- Let's get some of Johnny's dad jokes in there. Like, mm. that would be awesome. If we could get one of Johnny's, like, pure top tier dad jokes from the Johnny cupboard of dad jokes, boom, gold right there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Maybe get a ukulele in there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> uh,. <laughs> From your reaction, I think it's a good unpopular opinion. <laughs> no, it, it it is it's a good unpopular opinion. I'm like I don't I don't like, I don't know if this will be unpopular next. I think people love the current jingle. This is why I think it's unpopular. But, yeah, but a new jingle. I don't know. Well, we'll see. I mean, as per usual, we'll go out there, pull our wonderful audience, and uh... just had an idea. Oh. Okay. We should get the like theme tune. This is should have been my unpopular opinion from the three hundred movie. Oh, that's epic soundtrack. You know, you know what's funny is uh, what? <laughs> is in in the in the recording, which which you'll hear if you listen <laughs> this episode back, is that when we were in the very early parts of the episode, Johnny was like, "Oh, the the title's episode should be uh, this is Sparta," and the four the other three of us were just quiet. And then Johnny was like, come on. And then I reminded Johnny that that movie came out in 2006 and it is nearly 20 years old. So, <laughs> But the music. Yes. This is go far. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, could, it, could be, it could be interesting. Maybe we get some nice uh, BMC remixes of some. some sp- I mean, because, you know, that video game music is, is that it's fire. Hearing some of those BMC tunes on the other other podcasts, yeah. Dank music. Hashtag yeah. is a word my younger sister just taught me. 
All right. So since since we have no more unpopular opinions, I think that's it. So yeah, this was a this was a great great episode number three hundred. I think our listeners definitely have uh, have multiple multiple choices, multiple things they can talk to us about and you know give us some feedback on. I, th- I think we should name the episode. This is Sparta, and have people pick up the reference. I'm just saying. Absolutely. <laughs> I like that better. <laughs> the Sparta episode. <laughs> People will be like, what? I mean, Johnny put it in there, so now it's up to the editors or whoever to decide. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just start the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Sparta! Oh, goodness. <laughs> and so with that, uh, unless there is anything else that you all want to say, I think that's the uh, that's it. So uh, thank you, Johnny and uh, John and Ian for joining me on this great episode number 300 like what a milestone and uh here's to the to the next 300 episodes and as always thank you dear listener for for giving us some of your time and for uh kind of listening to us uh and uh tune in next week uh it's gonna be a good one so yeah with that see y'all later that is go time for this week thanks for hanging with us Subscribe now. If you haven't already, head to gotime.fm for all the ways. Also, check out Changelog News while you're at it. It's the software industry's best weekly podcast slash newsletter to keep you plugged in to developer news worth your attention. Subscribe now at changelog.com slash news. Thanks once again to our partners at fly.io, the home of changelog.com. And thank you to Breakmaster Cylinder, for producing so many fresh beats for us that we're now releasing full-length albums on Spotify, Apple Music, and the rest. Listen along by searching for Changelog Beats in your music app of choice. You'll find us. That's all for now, but we'll talk to you again next time on Go Time. Mm-hmm.